Hello everybody, this is Downgrade, a game fixer original show hosted by me. Downgrade takes a game series where it's bad or good or anything, and we try to figure out why the game hasn't expanded upon that past that game, or why the franchise is dead, or maybe the franchise is not dead, but you want it dead. That's what we're here to talk about. We're here to figure out where did the downgrade happen? Where did it start it to just collapse? Now, like I said, there's a lot of people out there that have their own opinion, and I understand you have your own opinion, but this is my opinion of what happened. So if you have your own opinion of what's going on, put it in the comments below. I'd like to hear your opinion of what's going on before. To figure out the game that we're talking about game, which is the Mega Man X series, we need to go back to the past and sort the past before we figure out in the future. So let's start with Mega Man X. Mega Man X was a well-known community, community of a game. Everybody loved it, beloved. But did you know also, fun fact, that Kenshin Yufemi didn't want Mega Man to be the main character? He wanted Zero to be the main character. But we'll get more into that later. So like I said before in the, at the beginning of the opening, there was Mega Man X. Mega Man X, Mega Man X was released in on May release on May 1st, 1994, and on from 95 to 96, X2 and X3 was released. Now X2 got really serious right. Everybody loved X2, the whole story of the of everything about Zero and Zero to Matt together, the map, the map, the X Hunters, which was interesting. X3 did something that really was phenomenal that everybody wanted to do. You get to play Zero, but only for a short period of time. I guess sort of they wanted to make Capcom wanted to make sure that you know hey the story is still based upon Mega Man or X as you put it it's not based on Zero so they still did that while they made a great game by giving a few gamers a taste of what to come with Zero hence I said what to come so we'll get to that later so guys this is where the tell end stops because it we had to literally wait we had to literally wait three years got the next X game, the next X game, which was a good thing, because when Capcom literally went back to back to back to back to back with games, yes, they were good, but there was times it was getting stale. You couldn't get a story out when you're doing something. This is something that was interesting. When they did it, it went with Mega Man X, it was something interesting, but he also knew what they were doing. They had the story in place and everything right, but this three-year gap actually gave us possibly one of the best Mega Man X games ever. Know if it's the best, it's possibly one of the best in the game. 1997, we got Mega Man X4, which is was it was a risk. It also it was a game that included um, anime, uh, anime, anime, anime cutscenes, animated cutscenes with bolder gameplay. Game, while the animated cutscenes are a little bit terrible, which we will tell you that doesn't take away from what the Boy game is. The gameplay is really exquisite and the, yeah, and the controls are actually functional and actually plays well. The fact that you actually get to play with Zero or Mega Man full time as opposed to half time was something interesting. This game was awesome. I also remember Maverick Hunters, I also remember Mavericks also giving you the quote unquote um, the whole quote unquote new leader, which is general and kernel. It gives you a more expansive, expansive universe of what Mega Man X is. I think this game does what it does very well with this game. And this game is very good. If you really want to get into the Mega Man X series, I highly recommend Mega Man X4. It's very fun to play. The graphics are actually very good for this time. And I'll give it that. Now let's move on to um, three years like three. Let's go ahead and move three more. Let's go ahead, but let's we, we would move three more years later because we go to 2000 and go back five. But we gotta stay within 1997 because there is an important game within this franchise, Mega Man Legends. We gotta talk about another franchise to get to this franchise. Mega Man Legends was a game that introduced 3D, which will introduce into another Mega Man X game into the future. Now, Mega Man Legends was a very good game was a very good game. Some hate it, some don't. And I understand this reason why some people hate it. But it was a game that wanted that introduced the 3D element to Mega Man. And unlike a certain game in the future, it did do it justice. 
it did do a good job with a good locking system, a way you can use the joy, the way you can literally use the analog stick, not the analog sticks, but the R2 and R2 button, R2 and it gave you a little addition of the R, R2 and L3, L2, L2 and R1 button. Yeah, I can get it out. But it gets you to utilize the buttons very well. And it literally gave you control of it. Now, some people will literally go on and say this is a terrible game, but if you get used to controls, it's really good. It's no different than Resident Evil. In fact, with the tank controls. But this is not tank controls. It literally lets you experience a little bit more and lets you control Mega Man. Just like it did in the old days. If you learn the controls of Mega Man Legends, it's pretty simple. Like I said, I highly recommend Mega Man Legends. But we're not here to recommend games, we're here to talk about the history. The reason I gotta talk about Mega Man Legends is we'll, we'll get into Mega Man X5. Mega Man X5's story is very, very terrible, very, very good. It's a good story, but I also include other things. This is where things get weird. Mega Man, Mega Man. Mega Man X5 has to deal with a colony of Eurasia. Now, the problem with this story is Mega Man X5 literally has two stories. You can let the Eurasia crash into the Earth, or you can destroy it. Either way, the Earth doesn't get destroyed, it gets infected with a virus, blah, 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 blah. Bullshit. But anyway, we're going back to the other we go back to what we know about the Eurasia. Eurasia was, the Eurasia crashed into the Earth, well, the reason why that's potent in the Mega Man series, if you get that situation happen, you get the Mega Man Legends saga. That's what you get. This is what starts, jump starts the Mega Man Legends saga, which everybody, little, there's a lot of theories out there and a lot of people will say, but this is canon, I think. This is really, I want to say, is canon. Mega Eurasia hits, everything messes up, everything, and then a few years down the road, you get Mega Man Legends. This is where we get Mega Man Legends. Mega Man Legends started the whole Reaver bots and all this. So yeah, this is supposed to be the part where you get Mega Man Legends. So this is where Mega Man, this is the reason why Mega Man X5, while the story does mess up a little bit, it does add that element to it, it really is pretty dumb. Because it, why would you want to do that? This is where I like to call that Capcom started literally trying to make a Mega Man like a multi-universe, like the Mega Man Cinematic Universe or something like that, or the Mega Man Universe. Trying to connect every Mega Man game to, to, trying to make sure that every Mega Man game is connected to one thing. What you can understand, you got alternate timelines, different things, you're acting like this is literally like DC Comics or something. There's alternate timelines, there's multiple Mega Mans. I mean, it's interesting, but we don't need to. I mean, if that's the point, then what's connected Mega Man Net Team Warrior to this? Or Mega Man Battle Network to this game? How does it connect to this one? See what I'm saying, people? This is where the thing is where I just say, keep Mega Man when you... This is the really, you could say, the first mistake of Capcom. Well, the first mistake of Capcom, and the first mistake of Kim Jr. Fume. When they did this, this is where it literally set it back a little bit. But, Mega Man X5 was still good. And with all with the story behind, with the story engaged, with the story side and everything, the gameplay and everything was good. Also, I mean, goodness gracious, I mean, it, it, I mean, the game, the game before they fucking fucked it up in the long, in the game. I mean, it was Guns and Roses, fucking Guns and Roses. I mean, Duff McWayland, awesome. I mean, Axel Rose. There were names that though. Guns and Roses. This is what made the game awesome even more. It made the game even more awesome than what it was. But like I said, just like Mega Man X4, they kept the they kept the controls the same, they kept everything interesting, and it gave you an interesting storyline. Plus, Mega Man X5 is an underrated. A lot of people will say is some will say it's a good game, but this is where it started to take that downward spiral. Right here, you can probably say this is where it starts with them. Not there yet. It's sort of like a half empty bat. It's sort of like getting up there, but it's not there yet. We'll get to that game next, which is the game that hates the most, which came out a year later Mega Man X6. Mega Man X6 literally starts off really bad. As I said in my reviews, it's a really bad game. 
first of all, you can tell this is a rush game. It's a real rush game. It was like Capcom was trying to do. But the reason why I can understand why Capcom did this. If it worked in the 90s, why does it why you want to do it here? It worked in the 90s. It worked in the 90s with Mega Man X1, X2, and X3. Why can't we do it with these games? Well, here's the problem. You don't have enough. If you have more time to explain the story and possibly get some probably no fucking American actors or literally just take gives the option to take out the subtitles of the or take out the thing at all because X5 fucking did it. X5 was awesome. That's one thing X5 did that X6 didn't do. It literally let you it while it did have the titles and everything, it didn't have no it didn't have the literal it literally didn't have any of the actors that were they just left a lot of things in there that was really bad. This game was rushed very hard. The robots were terrible. The um, gameplay was not ruined as the rest of them. The armors were not better than the other ones. These were probably the worst armors in Mega Man X history. And also, the gameplay is unfair. There are certain things that you've got to do that you can just basically get lucky with. Now, a lot of people say that the other game that's a little, the other game that we'll talk about next on the list is bad, but it did. It, this is really the one that I really hold in high regard. It is the worst game. Mega Man X6 literally takes everything about Mega Man X5 and literally just throw it down literally the toilet. Literally shits on put it in the toilet and literally shits on it and flush it down the commode. That's exactly what Mega Man X6 did. Mega Man X6 was really bad. Really bad. But like I said, I'm not gonna get into it because I already talked about that guy. We're literally keeping on with the topic of Mega Man X6 which is which we don't have time for because producers don't like us doing long videos. So let's go ahead and move on to Mega Man X. Let's go ahead and move on to Mega Man X7, which was released in 2003, two years later. Now, this was the first time. Remember when I, but before we get to Mega Man X7, let's talk about the same game that was released the very next year. Or I think it was released that year, whatever. Mega Man Zero, because it was released. Mega Man Zero was released as a hint in Mega Man X6 at one of the endings that Mega that Zero literally took the crime genetic sleep. That's where you get Mega Man Zero. Now, Mega Man Zero is a very far superior fucking game than Mega Man X6. I highly, highly recommend that you get the Zero collection. It's awesome. Mega Man Zero is everything that Mega Man X6 Six was supposed to be, but possibly maybe was hoping what you probably was hoping to be probably a better game than Mega Man X5. But this game is really good, and it literally involves a lot of stuff, really tricky combinations of everything, and taking some of the things and liberties that you probably see in future Mega Man games and other Mega Man games that you'll see in this game. Now, with that said, Mega Man X, Mega Man Zero, pretty good game, but Mega Man X7 is it a good game? Mega Man X7 was very, very tragic. It was a very, very tragic game. First thing first. Remember when I said that Mega Man, remember when I said Mega Man Legends would get a upgrade with what you would see Mega Man Legends 3D come into a Mega Man X series? Well, here you go. The thing about the thing that's wrong with Mega Man X7 is a lot of people really didn't like the 3D graphics. It, the 3D. It was terrible. There, there are certain things they took from it, and it really wasn't good at all. The problem with Mega Man X7 is it didn't know what it wanted to be. And I feel like if you're going to do something, don't half-ass it. Go full all into it. Don't make a game that's 3D, that's all that's 3D, but you're going to keep the 2D aspect to it. It's not good. When you literally do shit like that, people are going to be pissed. I think the problem is a lot of people don't like Axel. I don't hate Axel. I thought Axel was interesting. He does get annoying a little bit, but I'll admit that. But the problem with the game is really the 3D. You can't see shit. You can't move around. It literally is not as tight as you think it is. The controls are very terrible. You don't know if you're literally going to get into a lava pit. Like, for example, the lava machine level and um. Hydra, Hyena, 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 
people of a stage. You don't literally know where you're going in that stage. You don't know if you're going to fall in the lava pit. If you touch the lava pit, just fly here. You don't even know if you touch it. You can die. It's very, very bad. Very bad. Bad game. Don't play it. So, there are some problems with Mega Man X6. X6. X7. Yeah, we're there are some problems with Mega Man X7. I mean, but there are some funny moments. Arise. See what I mean? I always get a I always get a chuckle out of that. Anyway, back to um back to the story at hand. Mega Man X seven was really painful. A lot of people hated it. It was the game that everybody hated. It's probably the worst game of the year. If there was a Razzie Award, it would probably win. This game was really, really, really bad. A lot of people hate it and it deserves all the hate it was a game that should have doomed Mega Man X period there should have been another Mega Man X but there was another Mega Man X attempt two years like one year later will this game be superior to Mega Man X7 Mega Man X8 was a whole can of worms there were some things about it that was working, and there were some things against it that were working. A lot of people will say that this game hurt itself, but I disagree. I think this game did some good things about it. Mega Man X8 was was what it was. It was a game that was trying to really build what was a really problematic game and try to fix what it was. This game was very well done but there were some things about it that was just not good i mean once one thing that they did that was good is they literally took away the 3d aspect and went back to the 2d good for them problem was they also took away the live systems which is something interesting about the which is something that is a whole state in the Mega Man saga literally lives are something that you need in the Mega Man. not going back to the screen and The Mega Man X, X8 also had his merits. The graphics were actually inviting, and also the robots were not bad, except for Burn Racer. Really. Anyway, it was an explore, experimental story that literally gave you something interesting. It wasn't Sick Man again? What the fuck? No, it wasn't Sick Man again. It was Luminous. That's something that Mega Man X8 did that was very, very well. It took something that was absolutely supposed to be trash but it actually turned something in it was it was actually utter trash and panned by a lot of critics but over the years a lot of Mega Man fans actually gave it some sort of a soft spot in their heart it's actually some of Mega Man fans favorite game Mega Man X8 literally over the years have literally you know grown on some people and it was pretty good and I think it really deserved another chance. But, alas, some of the stuff in the game was too unforgiving. And plus, as I said before, Mega Man X7 was a looming, looming game that literally hung in the background of Mega Man X8. Literally holding down like a big weight that was just hurting. So, what's the problem here? Was it Mega Man X7 that doomed them? No, it really wasn't. It was the combination of Mega Man X6 and Mega Man X7. Look, Mega Man X6 is terrible, and I'll tell you this is all in this right, and I little will tell you, defend this to the time my grade, that it was a piece of shit game that shouldn't have never existed. But X7 literally started the little shit storm. X7 ended it. And that was the point. That's the whole point of video games, and the whole point of video games in general. If you literally, if you take the time to make a good game, it's gonna be good. But if you don't take the time to make a good game, then you literally just take a short while. While maybe, while maybe also it maybe worked in the past, you're always going to get a good game.
Thanks for watching, people. This is my first episode of Damn Rain. I hope y'all like it. Please leave some likes and also give me your suggestion. What game do you want me to research in Damn Rain? Thank y'all for watching. Love all y'all, and we'll be back with another episode. See ya.